Welcome to episode 40 of Thought Bubbles, sparkling insights into community engagement, coming to you as most regularly from my office in McLaren Vale, about 45 minutes south of Adelaide in South Australia. This is my last Thought Bubbles, at least it's my last Thought Bubbles in my capacity as Becky Hurst Consulting. I've reached the end of my journey of Becky Hurst Consulting and it's been an amazing journey over the last nine years. And I have learned so much, met so many amazing people and worked on so many amazing projects. I wanted to think a little bit about influence in relation to Global Community Engagement Day that's on Sunday, the 28th of January. And it's our first Global Community Engagement Day that has engaged to act. We've decided that's the date because it's Wendy Sakissian's birthday and Wendy is very inspirational to so many of our collective and thinking about influence in relation to Becky Hurst consulting over the last nine years, I've really been thinking about the influence that we as practitioners make in supporting communities to have influence in decision making. It is so, so hard to try and measure the level of influence that you've enabled that community to have. And I think that us as practitioners need to work on how we measure it. What has been really measurable over the last nine years is the influence that I've been able to have on the sector of community engagement, particularly in South Australia. So forgive me for a moment for reflecting on some of these things that I think there has been a big influence over in that last nine years. The first one being that back nine years ago, I arrived in South Australia 11 years ago, and community engagement as a term really wasn't talked about very often. It wasn't heard of. It was a very new concept that some local governments were starting to think about. And you, you fast forward to now, and every, well, I would say at least 90% of state government departments and agencies and local councils have some kind of emphasis on community engagement. Whether it be a community engagement framework, a policy, a procedure, they know that you no longer do just the bare minimum public consultation that you have to do by legislation. They know that it's more valuable to do more. I would say 90%, that's a guess. And it has been an honour to work on so many of those policies and frameworks and things. And even as a state, whilst I wasn't directly involved in it, the Better Together um, framework that now is in place that the Premier's Department has put together just gives us something so decent to base our work on. So that's the first thing I thought. The second is the world of online engagement. Oh my goodness, how that has changed in the last decade. Nine years ago, there was stuff happening on this thing called the internet, uh, but barely anything in the world of community engagement from my perspective. Fast forward to now, 2018, and it's everywhere. Now that doesn't mean it's been done well everywhere, but it's everywhere. There is a lot happening, and so many local government and state government departments and federal government are using online tools and techniques to engage each other. What we've also obviously seen a massive, massive swell of is community activism and community-led engagement. So people getting together to do something in their community and that has been fueled and massively supported by the rise of social media in that decade. Just fantastic to watch. I've loved it. Thirdly, now this connects with the other two, the profession of community engagement is now starting to be recognised as a profession. There are so many consultants out there and there are so many public servants out there with the, the name, the word ex, um, engagement in their job title. This is good and bad, because what we've got to be really cautious of is what is meant by engagement. And again, that comes back to that influence that I, that I mentioned right at the beginning. So, those are my three things, the, uh, the policies and procedures and frameworks and the presence of community engagement, the world of online engagement and how it's progressed, and the profession being so out there as far as so many people talk about engagement now and have engagement in their job titles. Um, where to from here? Well, I'm off to a consultancy called Oricon, which is a global consultancy with 7,500 employees, so going to be very different to me on my own, and I am really, really looking forward to joining the team there. I'm going to be one of the global lead, uh, the global lead sorry, for change engagement at Oricon in their stakeholder and um, communication team. Uh, my focus personally is going to remain on influence, um, how we can um, drive passion from the bottom up, how we can continue to influence decision makers, how we can influence people to understand more about community engagement sector. I'm going to be continuing as the, um, obviously the co-founder, always will be the co-founder of Engage to Act, but as the president of Engage to Act and really look forward to driving the sector in that space too. So I've got a feeling the next nine years is going to be 
doubly awesome to what the last nine years is. So thank you for joining me on this journey of the last nine years. Um, I've actually got quite a lot to get done in the office this morning, but I would love to hear um, from you if I've worked with you or if there's been any way that I've influenced your work or that you've seen me influence others. I love to hear about that. All right, until maybe next time. I don't know. We'll see. Speak soon.